In the past 12 years, the Air Force hockey program has done some amazing things on the ice, winning seven conference tournament titles in that stretch, more than any other college hockey team during that time period. And while that accomplishment is quite a feat, the leaders they are preparing along the way are just as amazing, if not more so. Case in point, Captain Mitch Terrell, currently stationed in Japan in special operations, who played a pivotal role in saving the lives of the Thai boys soccer team from a mountain cave as it flooded. But let's back up a bit. Before Terrell graduated in 2014, his hockey career was quite a tumultuous ride, being a part of two Atlantic hockey champions, but also suffering a scary injury in an exhibition game. The whole goal was to play college hockey and play well and uh, make a name for yourself there. And so, um, as that kind of slipped away and, and, and became more difficult and uh, my time grew thin, it was, uh, I, was, I was a little bitter about it, but um, that's just one of those things you got to overcome. I mean, um, you can be negative, you can be pessimistic about it, or you can you know, get back on your grind and, and get after it, and uh, I was very blessed to have a good senior year. Good senior year is an understatement. He scored 14 points on eight goals and six assists, including being named MVP of a holiday tournament, which included wins over two top 20 teams. He scored three goals in those two games. Upon graduation, Terrell sought the team atmosphere in his Air Force career, so he trained to become part of the special ops team and was assigned to Kadena Air Base in Japan in 2017. Little did he know that the Thai rescue effort would fall under his command when the other commander on duty had surgery and was ruled out for the time being. While Terrell was the first to admit his team was just a group among many, their military experience with mission planning was one of the many keys to making the rescue happen. We really didn't provide much more capability that they didn't have. You know, they're divers, they uh, had everything that we had, but um, we have a very unique way of looking at, at problem sets and, and we do uh, military decision making very well. Um, our planning processes are pretty pretty tight and in a rescue operation of that nature and that complex it was uh, important that you're planning and, and you're getting multiple perspectives. Being a part of a sports team was so important on uh, learning that team camaraderie and that team aspect. Uh, a lot of what I was responsible for doing out there in Thailand was just maintaining those relationships because we weren't doing anything unless the Thai approved it and we weren't doing anything with our, our attack counterpart with us and so you need to be able to work in those team settings whether or not it's through a language barrier or through uh, different uh, beliefs barriers and um, so it's extremely important that you understand how that team aspect works and the best championship sports teams are the ones that are, are tight knit and get input and pull from everybody uh, and that's exactly what we had there in, in Tam Luang. I mean we had such a tight knit good group of people Terrell's unit was mainly responsible for moving air tanks through the caves, while a batch of British divers took care of the bulk of the rescue effort. We were just uh, pack mules for a little bit, and our guys were having a good time with that. Um, hucking these tanks back there, I mean, they're heavy and it's tough to do, but two days we were able to forward stage 270 tanks um, forward to Chamber 3. And, um, you know, that's not the uh, sexy part of the mission, but it was something that enabled it to go. And then all our guys were amazing um, during execution. We were up to the fourth sump, receiving the kids as they came through, um, doing a quick medical assessment. Our PJs were fantastic at that. And then um, get them up into chamber three, where the Thai doctors would perform their medical assessment. If they were breathing, if they weren't too hypothermic and, and everything was good, then we continued them along. Um, belayed them down a little cliff face back into the last sump. A couple of our guys were able to take them through that last sump dive and then hand them off to the Australians who brought them up through this tight little uh, little elevator um, area using a rope system that they were able to gem up. And then uh, once they're at the top of this huge uh, precipice, um, our guys uh, in conjunction with a civilian rope team and uh, the Chinese were able to move the kids through a highline rope system uh, across this boulder field. And then once they were down safely from this uh, huge chamber to boulder field, we were able to pass them off to the Thai litter teams, uh, at which point they were taken out of the cave. Being a part of such a miraculous rescue is something Mitch will no doubt never forget. He says he continues to learn new styles of leadership with every passing mission. In my experience, you want to be the approachable, genuine, um, guy who, who really cares and looks out for, for your guys. I mean, that's why 
we are in that position of leadership. I mean, our, our position is not to further our careers. It's not to make ourselves look good. It's, it's to promote our guys and, and make those underneath us uh, as good as they can possibly be. Um, lifting those guys up and looking out for them is how you really earn and garner that respect from them. When you show up as a lieutenant and you realize that there are guys underneath you who have been in the career field for 15 years and they've been doing unbelievable, amazing things. And, and so finding your niche in that is, is extremely important. You're not coming in and, and changing everything 180 and, and running it and now it's your show. It's, it's a, it's a team environment and you got to get everybody on board together and pull in the right way. And um, so it's just super important that you realize that even though you may be in charge, you're, you're not going to be the smartest guy on every subject and, and you're there to facilitate what the enlisted are able to do. The best leaders realize that you're only as good as your last shift. Uh, very similar to athletes, you know, I mean the best athletes are only happy um, with their last shift. If it wasn't a great shift, they're coming out and getting after it again, and uh, that's kind of how you got to lead. Terrell wanted to make sure today's future officers think about a career in special ops. He says it's a very rewarding line of work. Such a unique experience, and, and you get to be a part of such amazing opportunities and, and lead the most amazing people um, and be teammates with these guys who've gone out and done just miraculous things. Um, very lucky to have an amazing uh, senior enlisted leader who's my right hand man and um, I couldn't have been uh, more blessed in, in getting to work with him. Yeah, if you're interested in that type of career field, it's, it's uh, reach out, you know, I mean, uh, to the recruiting and selection uh, area that's down in Hurlburt Field and they'll hook you up, they'll set you guys up. But uh, at the end of the day, I always was curious about the career field and I knew it would be hard to live with myself if I didn't give it a shot. In his relatively young career, Mitch has already had opportunities of a lifetime, and he is quick to point out, coming to the Air Force Academy was the beginning of them all. It's going to be hard to come into work, you know, next week and, and, and start building off that. So uh, that's going to definitely be a very special experience. But uh, when you grind it out here at the Academy with the same people for four years and, and you get to know those guys, I mean, it's very similar to being in a combat or in a stressful situation like that where you build these bonds with these guys and um, yeah, I mean, I'm never going to forget the teammates I, I, I grew up with and I still am able to stay in touch with a good amount of them and it uh, seemed like everybody who I was friends with at the academy, they're all amazing people and it's uh, very reassuring to know that they're out there doing their job and, and, and doing it well um, all over the world.